Hello, welcome back to another edition of In the Studio. Today, I am going to show you how to make a counter rhythm or a nice rhythmic texture bed that will help fill your drum groove and yeah, just make things a little bit more interesting, have some kind of bubbly type percussion rolling around the kick. Um, it can really add to the groove. So this is a remix that I'm working on here. I have everything muted except for the drums. I don't think I can show you the rest at the moment, hopefully soon, um, but I'm gonna give you a little preview here. So there you go. Um, yeah, I just want something that's kind of tucked down low, that's dancing around the kick, some sort of counter rhythm um, that will just help fill out this drum groove here. So I'm gonna actually select a bigger section. And there's many ways to approach making something like this, um, but this is one of the methods that sometimes I like to use. So let's let's give it a try here. Now, I, when you do this, you want to make sure that you're you have um, a section of your drums that there's a lot of elements going on at the same time. So I have you know my tambourine and a bunch of hi hats and a little tom groove and a, a second snare that has a little skippy pattern. So there's going to be lots of elements to kind of work with um, and pull from. So what I'm going to do is go over to my drum bus where everything's grouped together and add Edison. And we're just going to record a little bit of the drum group as a whole. So I'm just going to hit record here and play this in. That should do and I'm just going to grab this and pull it into the playlist and I'll probably end up just looping this maybe over uh, we can try maybe four bars or something so I'll just select the four bar section and let's put this in the mixer really quick so I'm going to throw that on 19 and I'll I'll group it with my percussion and we turn this down a little bit and I'm going to add a few plugins um, just to start. So the first thing I want to do is, is add an EQ. I want to filter out the low end. I, I don't want the full kick in there, obviously. That's just going to clash with the bass and my actual kick, so that won't be good. So let's clean that up, maybe take everything out below around 300-ish. And so just make a little band pass here. And then I want to, you know, make sure the hi hats and the shakers have room. So I'm going to pull this in as well, and maybe leave this around 4K, 4 K, 4.5 K, and then I might even just grab a resonance peak here, and this might be something interesting to uh, control with an LFO or you know, do some some sweeps just to give it a little extra movement. So I might just put a resonant peak right there for now. And then I'm going to sidechain this pretty aggressively, make it kind of really pump with the kick. So I'm going to grab uh, my volume shaper here and mix that in at 80% pretty, pretty aggressively. And let's hear how, what that sounds like. This is going to be tucked down quite low, but for now I'll leave it kind of loud. Okay, so that doesn't sound very good. So what we need to do is just find a nice section here. You know, we'll just move the, the actual clip around until we find a nice little counter rhythm. And so this maybe will take a little bit of experimenting. Um, I'm just going to take this snap to none. So we have a free flowing movement here. It's not going to snap to anything. 
and I'll just I'm just gonna move the clip around until I find a nice little nice little counter rhythm. So let's give this a go. That might work right there. So, and yeah, that might just take a little bit of experimenting with, move it around so you find something that might might work. So we can even add to that um, with a few other plugins here. So I actually just might add a, uh, a transient shaper or a transient designer just to sharpen that up and really enhance the, the the attack and the transients of the, the drum hit. So I'm going to pull the sustain in and increase the attack, really kind of sharpen that up. So I hear without it. just adds to that attack and helps it poke through and then what I might do is actually add a delay here as well and we can try I might try a 16th and let's bring the wet mix down a little bit add a little bit of distortion to the feedback actually leave it on that for now and I'm gonna add a little bit of reverb here might even change the size or the diffusion there we go make this quite short pull this out wide here around 20% or so. Yeah. And then I might just uh, give it a little bit more movement with some auto panning. This is a free plugin. It's great. Just go grab it if you don't have it. Pancake. I use it all the time. 
and I'm just gonna go for maybe a bar. take a little bit more of the low end out and could even follow this whole chain with another EQ if you wanted to scoop out more low end if it was clashing with the kick or bass too much. And this little resonance peak here is maybe something that you could automate. Let's do that really quick. Quick. Um, I'm just going to add a peak controller here and grab our EQ, and then I'm just going to link this frequency band, which is our resonance peak here. I'm going to link that to the peak controller. So I'm going to go, let's see, where is it? It'd be this one here on track 19, and I just want the LFO in this case. So I'm going to hit accept and I'm just going to detach this for one second and then grab our peak controller here set the base where it about right there and dial on how much it range of motion you want on it with the volume. And then I'm just going to slow that down. Just an unseen timing, I think. Just give it a little extra movement. Might even follow this with a, a Harrison EQ just to give it a little extra character maybe and just scoop out a little bit more of the low end just to double make sure that we're not clashing with the kick. that's kind of the, the process on how I would maybe approach doing it this way. You got yourself a nice little kind of counter rhythm um, that fills the groove out and I mean you can go crazy with this. You could then even bounce this section out if you wanted to to audio and manipulate it even further. But there you go, um, how to make a bubbly counter rhythm percussive texture for your drum groove. Hopefully you enjoyed it. That's it for today. Cheers. <laughs>